Hey, I'm Colin, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to construct a paving stone walkway that can handle vehicular traffic. Now typically a walkway is just built for pedestrian traffic, so it's super narrow. Our walkway is about eight feet wide, so it is quite a bit wider, but not still wide enough to handle vehicular traffic like an SUV or a truck or a big semi truck. We're still gonna be beefing it up though because we do occasionally drive over UTVs, forklifts, and tractors over this walkway with that width. So we're gonna beef it up by putting in 10 inches of gravel base, implementing a piece of biaxial geogrid in the middle of those two five inch lifts. We're gonna make sure it's compacted properly. We're gonna screed over our bedding material at our 80 millimeter thick paving stone, which is designed for industrial applications. And then with our properly installed edge restraint and joint sand, we'll have a better functioning walkway for both pedestrian and vehicular traffic. Now, when it comes to the layout step for this particular project, it's super simple because we already had an existing eight foot walkway that we're using as a reference for our new width. So by using that, we're gonna take our white marking paint, we're gonna mark eight inches outside the edge of the existing walkway and go a little bit beyond. So we have plenty of extra gravel base for our edge restraint to sit on. Then there's our slope. The finished grade was easy to find because we just took a laser transit and it found our high spot on one end and we have 2% slope sloping two inches to the other end of the walkway. So we have plenty of drainage for good functionality and performance. Now with the area marked out with our white marking paint and our finish grade established, we can move on to the next step, which is excavation. We're gonna be excavating 14 inches overall from our desired finished grade. That's gonna give us 10 inches of gravel, one inch of bedding material, and then three and an eighth inches for our 80 millimeter paving stone. Now before you excavate any area, make sure you always get the utility locate well before, because hitting utilities can cause a lot of headache. Now with our area excavated, we can start bringing in our gravel base. We're gonna do that in four phases. The first phase is going to be a woven geotextile, then some gravel base and compact it, geogrid, and then more gravel base. Now after we have our woven geotextile installed and wrapped up our sides, we're going to bring in about five inches of three quarter minus gravel and compact that with our heavy duty Wacker Newsen play compactor. After that gravel is compacted, we can put our Biax geogrid, which helps strengthen and create interlock in a gravel system so that you have more longevity and performance out of any pavement system that goes on top of it. After that grid's down, we'll put in an additional five inches of three quarter minus gravel and compact that and start working towards our finished grave to prepare for bedding. Now that our gravel base is prepared, we can do the bedding step to this project. Now, traditionally, the bedding step consists of one inch of either ASTM C33 sand or maybe a quarter inch crushed clean rock. For this particular project, we're doing something heavy duty. So we wanna utilize a biaxial geogrid that we're gonna stretch across our project for our hydrostrain to sit on. And then we're gonna be putting a quarter inch open crushed clean stone on top. The reason why we want this biaxial geogrid in there is because we're using Pava Perma Edging, which is a modified concrete edge restraint. We want it to sit on a portion of this grid that extends underneath our paving stone system. So when something drives on it or moves on it, it creates interlock and has more tensile strength to pull on an edge restraint to make it tighter and stronger.
We've screened out enough bedding to start laying our paving stones, which is the next part of this process. We're gonna be laying our Milana four stone random layout, which is a nice stone because it's 80 millimeters in thickness. And with that random layout, we can create a lot of interlock with these larger and smaller pieces to be very, very strong. After we started to lay our field, we can start cutting our edges. We're gonna to have to cut our edges basically the whole way through this pathway because it's sort of sweeping and meandering around some landscaping. After our edges are cut, we can start laying in our eight and a half inch charcoal border stone. This will be a nice accent piece to prepare us for our edge restraint. With our entire field of paving stones laid and cut in and our border placed outside that cut edge, we can now bring in our edge restraint. The type of edge restraint we're using for this particular project is Perma Paver Edging, which is a modified concrete edge restraint. But remember, no matter which edge restraint you choose to go beyond the outside edge of your paving stone system, no matter the application, make sure you always scrape away your bedding material to expose your gravel base. In this case, we're exposing our gravel base as well as the biaxial geogrid that we placed underneath our edge in order to create more strength and longevity for our system. The nice part about perma paver edging is it only has to go up from the bottom of the paver about a third of that thickness, no matter the thickness of the paving stone that you choose, as well as in case the bedding material below it, and it only has to be about four inches wide. It's very low profile, easy to hide, really good performing, especially with this geogrid tying it in. You will have a functional and good performing system. Now that our edge restraint has been placed and installed, we can move on to the finished step of our project, which is gonna be pre-compaction, sweeping in our joint material, and then finished compaction. We always pre-compact because we wanna settle all those minor imperfections. And if any paving stones are gonna crack or break, they'll usually do it during that step. That way we can remove them easier before we bring in our joint sand. Then we're gonna bring in our joint sand. And we're gonna sweep that over top of where we want our joint sand to be when we're done. We're gonna sweep it up to the top of our paving stone and then compact our final time, which is gonna settle all that joint sand down to the right height. You will need to add a little bit more in theory or take away a little bit as well because you want it about a quarter inch below the top of your paving stone to be nice and low in your sand joint to provide that function, but also look aesthetically pleasing. After that sand is to the proper height and you've blown or swept off any excess sand, you are finished with your project. So now you know how to build a pedestrian traffic area that's also suitable for vehicular traffic. Make sure if you have any projects like this coming up and you have any questions, that you leave them down in the comments below. We'll make it our most biggest priority to answer them as soon as possible. And also check out our other library of videos and blogs on our website to help you through any hardscape projects you have coming up.